tell you what this is going to do for me. I, this is probably good to just have. Is, are we in your podcast right now or no? We didn't start yet. No, we, we, can, start, we can start right now. You want to start right now? Yeah. Okay, we're starting right now. I, I, I got to say this right off the bat. This corona thing sitting inside, like, and I know, John, I've talked to you about this. James, for years I've talked to you about this, about how I've never done things like this because I was very uncomfortable, like doing like, not podcasting things, but being on camera and stuff. Yeah. And I think this is going to force me <laughs> Good. to do this. Good. So thank you, boys. This is because of you. This is my first embarrassing. This is embarrassing. Camera. All if bets are off. Faces can be on screen. That yeah. face can be too. Exactly. All bets are off. It's life in the time of a pandemic. Uh, this is Carcon <laughs> Carne. I'm talking across the, the vast expanse of the city of Chicago with my old pal, Tim Virgin, uh, my slightly newer pal, John Manley, both full-time disc jockeys. You hear them every day on 101 WKQX. Uh, before I begin our conversation, our aimless um, directionless, rudderless conversation. I'm going to read a sponsor. Okay. Carcone, if you could just, I don't know, pour another bourbon as I do this. I'm going to get a nice tea. Uh, that sounds so refreshing, Tim. Thanks, buddy. Carcone Carne is sponsored by CH Financial Services. Business owners, are you tired of your hard earned profits going toward paying expensive fees every time your customer pays with a credit or debit card? We're happy to announce our partners at CNH Financial Services have the solution. CNH is the fastest growing financial services company in Illinois, as recognized by Inc. Magazine, and their patented technology allows you to eliminate 100% of the fees associated with accepting credit, credit and debit cards as a form of payment. That's right, Tim and John, 100% of the fees. CNH will also upgrade your business to the industry's leading point of sale system to streamline every aspect of your business for no cost. That's right, no cost. Visit freeprocessingnow.com or call 855-600-2437, extension 999, and start saving money today. Just hey, like radio. Just like radio. Amazing. That's amazing. Can I uh, uh, do my sponsor now? I'd like to uh, thank Toronto sub, uh, Soft Sub Rolls. Uh, I've been eating these a lot lately. And uh... <laughs> So I, do you guys, are you, are you stacked up with provisions? Are you hunkered down for the long haul here? Are you, as the, the apocalypse continues, are you... I have been doing two things since this started, napping and snacking. Yep. And they're both starting to become a bit of a problem. Yeah, no, it's absolutely. This is funny because I agree with you on this. I went and I was the guy going, I'm not really sure if I should stack up. And I stocked up on the things I wanted, but I'm absolutely eating everything in the first like two or three days. Cause you're yeah. bored. My, uh, I was doing some intermittent fasting before all this started. And now I still am, but my fasting times is now instead of, six hours on 18 hours off it's like 18 hours on sleep for six and then 18 hours straight again it's a problem <laughs> the best meme i saw all week was a before and after quarantine and the before was vince neal circa like 1984 about oh, the crew <laughs> and the after is the present day vince neal because yeah if you're home all day you can't help it but just Go for the snacks. I, I've, I've rifled through an entire package of uh, pistachio Oreos today. Oh, my gosh. Go I Just before I started talking to you guys, I kid you not, I was online at the Chicago Nut Company, whatever it is, online ordering peach rings, uh, I, what is it, pistachios, uh, like literally all the candy, like Tootsie Rolls, like everything was like three ninety nine a pound. And I'm like, I'll take that, that. What if something happens and I can't even go online anymore? I'll take that. <laughs> literally, I have... A guy's got to do it. And let's face it, I've been admiring your peach ring for I don't know how long, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's something else, James. That's so. You know, I, I was talking yesterday with a, a guy representing a suicide prevention uh, organization. I'm trying not to be freaked out by stuff. Like I went to Target yesterday, and it felt like the mist like the grocery sure. store scene in the movie The Mist. And I, I, I kept my cool in there, and I left there. I'm like. Well, fuck. I, I, I think I'm overwhelmed by this to the point where at five o'clock yesterday, I, I'm like, I'm just going to take a little nap. I was gone for two hours. Like my entire yeah. mind and body shut down. I was gone. And how are you guys relating to this? I, I, I get by with a lot of dark humor, uh, but it's weird. I don't know if dark humor is going to help you, dude. That's <laughs> I think it's going to get worse. It's all I have. It's all I John, have. John, you can start on this one if you want. Uh, all right. I, what am I doing? Like, how am I handling? I think I'm doing okay. I, I kind of with you though. It was, um, I think when it really kind of hit was the same thing. I went into uh, a Whole Foods, like our last day at the office. Um, I was like, I'm going to bop over to Whole Foods. It's right across the street. 
from our studio. So I was like, I'll bop yeah. in there and grab like a couple cartons of noodles or whatever and a ham. I don't know. Whatever was there, it was Whole Foods. I'll grab some stuff and then bounce. And when I walked in there, it was, you know, uh, empty shelves, except for like the one sad quinoa bowl that nobody wanted to order or eat. Like there's like the one. <laughs> like, I talked about that today. I talked about, did you see that list? It was like listed somewhere. It's what is still left on the shelves in most oh, stores. So good. It's brilliant to see. It's terrible for companies. I mean, if you really want to do market research, this is the time yes. to do market research on stuff. Yeah. Like, that's like, I was like, wow. So nobody likes the, you know, Trader Joe's, uh, broccolini apparently like, that's the one thing that's, even in this time where it's the only thing on the shelf people are like mm, I'll, I'll figure it out i'll, I'll wing it i'll it, i'll throw a squirrel i don't know <laughs> we'll do anything. it is very eerie it, it, like still at rush hour I, i'm gonna be honest with you i ran out to best buy today because i wanted to get i wanted to get a printer i'm just gonna be honest with you because i went to i like circling things writing things on like my logs and stuff so or right or just printing up like news things and i and i have it on my iPad in front of me, like when I'm doing my show, but sometimes I need something else, whatever. The bottom line is I needed to get it. So I finally ran out and got it. And it was during rush hour. There's a lot of people driving. And then literally by the time I came out of Best Buy, it was probably around six, a little bit after six o'clock, it was nothing. And it, it's just, it's kind of not even kind of, you're train. Kind of. kind of eerie. It was very eerie at a little bit. And now tonight it's going to get worse, right? It's because people are going to be, are we supposed yeah. to stay in? Is it the law or is what's happening? It's not the law. I mean, the whole idea of, what is it, voluntary sheltering? I, I forgot the exact term. Yeah. Uh, the, th the thing they're doing in California. I feel like we're already doing that. They're not doing it in California, by the way. I saw California. Nobody's doing anything because the exercise thing gives people the excuse to just do whatever they want anyways. They're just putting on yoga pants and doing what they were going to do originally. Also, no, by the way, can I just say right now that it's a real dick move if you're still exercising out there yes. right now. Not yes. Not spreading germs or anything like that, but like the rest of us are, like I said, having a bit of a snack problem. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to go something serious. You really did. Like no, no, no. I'm trying to play as much video games as possible. I look out the window and there's like Chad and Trisha jogging down the street, getting a good sweat in. And it's like. Yeah. With their dog, yeah. Elmo. Yeah. Uh -huh. Everybody's yeah. happy. So, so man, I, it, this is a way to get. I'm going to tell you right now. It is. I've seen a lot of. This is weird. Comedians, who are now out of work, doing some. Comedians are dark people. Some oh, of yeah. them, right? So a lot of them are going into like these really quick depressions. Like I've literally seen three different comedians get on and go. I don't have a job. I haven't slept in two days. I stole from CVS yesterday. Like literally. There's some, it's going to be bad for some people. It's going to be horrible for some people. It's tough. I, mean, I think one of the secrets, not to go too dark. I mean, when I talked to uh, this organization last night, connection is key. I mean, we're yeah. all socially isolated. It feels really strange because it is really strange and it's unprecedented. But even something like this, where I'm looking at both of you, we're having a video chat, we're connecting on some human level. As much of that as you can do. Yeah. I mean, we joke, oh, this is like, what introverts have been doing all along. Yeah, I'm a little introverted too, but I need connection. I think we See, all do. See, and I was, and this is what I was afraid of, and now I'm getting used to it. Like, look, even with my, do you guys, do you guys FaceTime your moms and your dads? Your parents? No. No. See, my mom, I didn't either until now my brother started doing it and my, my mom started getting used to it. And so now I kind of give her the heads up if I'm going to call FaceTime likewise so she can get herself prepped. Uh -huh. but like You're literally, we get it. I th th I, continue. <laughs> I think, right, exactly. But I think it's helping her. I think it's better. I think, oh, for what sure. What you're saying is it absolutely correct is what I'm trying to say. Uh, it's funny. I, you know, I take a lot of calls from like, that's part of my job is like we're dealing with like the record labels and stuff like that. And it was amazing. Like today, I took maybe five phone calls. Each of them were like 45 minutes to an hour long of us just shooting the shit. Yeah. Like it had nothing to do with the business. It was just like, how are you? What's yeah. What's yeah. The There's the a lot of people actually doing that. Like if I had a couple of people in the industry, like, are you okay? Is everything cool? Like what's going on? And everybody I think is absolutely talking to each other right now. It's pretty amazing actually. Well, it's funny, John, on. you and I uh, had to talk about some work stuff yesterday morning and 
what could have been a 10 minute conversation yeah. was like an hour. I hung up. I'm like, Oh wait, it's almost lunchtime. How did that happen? But yeah, it's just, it's, I enjoyed it's, having yeah. the exchange. Yeah. I think you're right. And it's, and it's so true where it's like, uh, I'm an introvert as well. And I was like, Oh, I was born for this. I'm a gen X introvert. Like this is my wheelhouse, right? Like, let me show you the ways Yeah, and but we're on Thursday and, and I'm like, and I have a girlfriend. So like we're sheltered together. I have someone to interact with. And even today I'm going like, man, I got to get out of this house. Like I got to. All right. I want to ask you two questions because James, you're married. Is it, is it, is there times where it's getting tough for you two guys? Like, do you guys have like separate parts of the house or everything that you're going to yet? Where you're like, but, your wife's like, you're on my nerves. Go do a podcast. Well, you know, I, I've <laughs> selectively removed myself from the family to do the podcast. Yeah. Like this is yeah. just, this is my self care. You know, yeah. I've got two kids I'm minding as well and a cute, adorable dog. Um, but you, you kind of know when you're overstepping and when you're in people's faces too much. And you, you just kind of, after a certain amount of time, you know when to back off and retreat yeah. to your own corner. But I mean, I do, I work out, this is my home office I'm in right now. Uh, this is where I do my podcast. I, no real issues yeah. on my end. How about you, John? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I think I'm pretty lucky so far. It's been really, uh, you know, and we're kind of a new living yeah. together couple. So yeah. we're kind of going through things just as for the first time, just in general. Yeah. So, um, but no, it's been, um, it's been pretty good. The hardest part, honestly, uh, is been when it's time to like do my show. It's really, really weird. Yeah. My show with like knowing that she can hear me in the other room. Like it's, it's embarrassing sometimes, right? Yeah. Like, like, but if, like, but if I'm on the radio, I'll be like, are you listening? Are you listening right, right now? <laughs> like tune in. I'm making a joke about you. It's awesome. Now I'm five feet away going like, shut up, go outside. <laughs> like, I have a question for you guys. Do you think since the way society is and like, uh, like the younger generation we think aren't, like we were when we were, well, John, I don't know what, what generation you are. You're younger than us, but. I'm, a, I'm one of those, uh, the, <clears throat> the exennials was what they call us, but. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but millennials, we thought like we don't, like we used to like actually talk to each other and approach each other. Do you think this is going to force people to do that, even though we're not even together anymore with, with this FaceTime stuff? Do you think it'll get better? James, you have kids that are younger. Mm -hmm. do you, are, are they like, do you know what I'm saying? How they're not like as social. It is They're kind of social awkward is what I'm saying compared to what we were it's, growing yeah, up. It, it's funny. It is very different and it, it's hard to really qualify, but the way teenagers behave now is so completely different, almost to the point of being alien from what yeah. you and I, I think, grew yeah. up with. They, yeah. they are much more comfortable being on their own, being their own people and not having that constant interaction. Yes. Whereas when I, when I was 16 or 17, I had to be out every night, every night I could be out with large groups of people doing all kinds of miscreant stuff. That's not, maybe, maybe my kids are unique, but they're, they're perfectly fine. Just hanging out. I think it's going to force me to be into their stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. literally like it's going to pull me back and do it their way now, I think. Well, bit. think about like just using the technology that you have now more than you would have in the past. Like I'm a, like, don't ever, I'll, I'll never answer the phone. You will call me and I'll text <laughs> you while the phone's ringing going like, why are you calling me? You know what yeah. I mean? It's supposed to pick it up. And now Thank God you said that. Cause I thought it was just me. No, okay? it's not. I thought, oh. what a dick. Like really? That's my move. That's my yeah. move. Uh, I don't I'll, like answering the phone I, either. I don't like, I, I'll look at my either. phone with an incredulous look. Like you couldn't have texted. What are you doing? Well, why See, is this that's happening? it. That's it. And like, look, my dad was that same one when he first got his phone when he was alive. He's like, why could you just call? Because I'm trying to text him because it's easy. He's like, you get the count because his conversation is probably like you guys talking to me. It'll take a 10 minute conversation. Should have been only two minutes, but I make it a 10 minute conversation. And that's where texting comes in hand. You know yeah. what I'm saying? With people like me. And then I, and he's like, why can't you just call? Just call. It's so impersonal. And it's like, well, I guess it's not anymore. You know the frustrating saying? part is I've spent so much time trying to like corral my mom into being a texter or like, my yeah. family remember, it's like, just text. We can, we don't have to have, I don't need yeah. a 45 minute conversation about your day at the office. Just like, how are you? We're good. Text, yeah. text. And my now my mom's really good at it. Now I'm the opposite. And, and like, now I'm going like, somebody call me. Let's, let's get on the phone. Let's get on the horn. Let's <laughs> write it up. Like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> so I've got this little hobby, this little podcast hobby that's keeping me busy. John, based on what I'm learning from you, your your downtime, your at home time will be spent playing video games and drinking bourbon. Is there 
Like, what would you recommend to a, a shuttered in person, like binge wise or activity wise? Um, well, there's going to be a lot of movies getting played soon. I know that like, I'm going to watch a ton of movies. I think I might live tweet a couple of them. I have cats. So I'm excited to, uh, Ooh. to watch that. And it's not the butthole version, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you want to look at it. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean tvs movies video games i have a i've had a ukulele for like three years that i've never even touched and today i touched it that's not a metaphor by the way that's 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 factual that's real uh I, real ukulele. that's um, amazing yeah so i'm trying to I'm, I'm gonna try to learn that a little bit um i don't know pick a hobby we bought it we, we grabbed some puzzles that's the, what i did huh wait i gotta show you hold on See, I can't do puzzles at all. I cannot. They make really? me crazy. Wow. Really? Yeah, like jigsaw puzzles? No, I can't do it. Wait, are yeah. you guys ready? It's the bean. Okay, I'll, we're going to show you our puzzles, James. Okay, that. oh, it's the bean. I like that one. Yeah. Are you ready? Ready, boys? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Wait, what, is that Lebowski? Lebowski, my friend. Wait, is that a puzzle or is that an actual video case? It's a puzzle. It's a blockbuster puzzle of the big Lebowski DVD cover. How long do you have to finish? Wait, the okay, there you now I can see it. <laughs> That's amazing. Hey, what does it look like? <laughs> a puzzle? Look, it's like a, it looks like a, and it looks like a, like, That's we used cool. to go to Blockbuster. Uh huh. Like a VCR tape. So when you guys finish a puzzle, do you just tear it apart? Do you? Shellac it and frame uh, I'm it? I'm going to shellac do? it, bro. I'm going to get the, what is that stuff called? Gob goo, whatever it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I've done this in the past where I've finished a puzzle and then I take it apart, flip the pieces over and you do it with no picture. Oh God. Yeah. What yeah I can't do that. Well, that's that's not me. Insanity. Okay. I like was, I was alone. that's when you really run out of shit, dude. I'm telling you right now, like if you're doing that, I'm so, you, Tim, are you are you a movie watcher? What do you, what do you do in, in your this downtime? This is what I can't. It, this is what I'm going to do. I, I I really start getting kind of crazy if I watch more than like two movies back to back. Like I have to walk around. I have to do something. I have to move. And um, I've if I get into certain moods, like the things I watch will put me in a certain mood. But when I really want to get like into a, like I can watch three or four. It'll be like John Hughesy kind of stuff. That kind of reminds me of like the stuff you up. grew up with. The yeah, like, so, yeah, like the comforting stuff that I can watch. Literally, Ferris Bueller has been on TV 8 million times and I could watch it. You know what I'm saying? It's fine. But anything new, I kind of get, I, I get scared walking into that realm and I don't have enough patience to last through the first 20 minutes of something I don't like. You know, some things you have to wait out, especially like series now on TV. See, but, I can't watch movies over and over. I can't watch with the exception of maybe five movies, including National Lampoon's Vacation. Yes. I can't watch movies more than once. I feel like, well, things are different now, but in the old old world, before coronavirus, I feel like <laughs> if I had two free hours, I wanted to do something I haven't done before, see something I haven't seen. Like, it's so rare to get that free time. I want to make sure I'm doing something different. Uh, now I guess all bets are off, and I've got all the well, time in the world. I'll tell you something else I'm doing. I bought... I was a drum like most of my life when I in high school and college, I was, I was a drummer all my life. And I stopped when I got into radio because I lived in apartments Yeah, and they didn't have those V drums like they have now. And to afford those things, it was, those things are freaking expensive. So I actually bought it and I've had them and now I haven't used them since my last place. So I'm going to, my place is kind of small now, then, but I'm just going to put like a five piece, four piece in and just start playing. Hey, do you, like want to start a, do you want to start, start like a virtual a, a yeah. Corona fan? So, uh, especially with your ukulele, it's going to be yeah. awesome. <laughs> That'll be sweet. Some, just, I, James, do you play anything? No, but I was thinking maybe you should play the steel drum instead, and that would be more compatible with the ukulele. <laughs> there you have it. Yeah, but my neighbors would probably disagree with you on that one if I was trying, trying to play with that. Oh, but I love it. I, love I want to tell you a story it. really quick about where I live. My building is mostly millennial and younger Google employees, okay? Who are living life right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're like, woo, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they party on my floor constantly, okay? When I say constantly, it's like <laughs> constantly. And I can't yell at them because I want to be the guy going, get off my lawn. You know, I'm not doing it. Because, right. by the way, when you rent a place, they don't tell you who lives in here. Nope. They're like, they're not allowed to, right? It's the law or something. Yeah. 
or so i actually put one freaking song on gary a record guy was over there he's like i'm gonna play i'm gonna play a song we put it i got sonos put the song on for three minutes on a thursday night at nine o'clock i had the quickest door knock i've ever had with a millennial going could you please so i'm like are you shitting me man i'm 48 and you're gonna call i'm like it's literally not even turned up <laughs> like literally so now i'm now i'm gonna like i don't care anymore like it knocks i'm like nobody's home break it up <laughs> and i don't care anymore so yeah maybe steel drums the way to go from this point. maybe all right uh in the fleeting time we have left i want to promote the fact that you guys are on the radio every weekday uh tim virgin you are three to seven p.m on 101 wkqx mm -hmm. john manley seven to midnight uh you guys it, it's an interesting time you guys are the touchstones to the rest of the world right now as we're all shuttered in you guys are kind of on the front lines and i i don't want to overstate your value but you you play an important role right now in chicago being on the air yeah thanks no pressure right appreciate that <laughs> it's I look john i don't know about you but have you found out like felt in this last couple of days like it's a whole new world what we're doing now like every break has to be something about you don't want it to be depressing but you want people to know facts and then kind of with a little bit of humor yeah. and kind of like so it's a whole new world for me i don't know about you it's like i'm it's still kind of i think i feel like i'm still kind of trying to find my feet like i'm um i feel really disconnected from the audience doing it from here yeah oh really does that bother yeah. you yeah yeah a lot it really it, like i haven't figured how to get the get like, in your motion horny but like get the vibe you know yeah. like that, like my groove i haven't quite found I'm it still figuring that part out because yeah like i'm trying to be thoughtful and uh informative but also entertaining and trying to find like the the middle is stuff the hardest part is like you know 45 percent of the bands that we play were like coming to town in the next month or two so it's such like muscle yeah. reflex to be like yeah. June 10th, Foles, Aragon. It's like, wait. <laughs> right. Come on. I you still know. say June. Because <laughs> we're going to party in June, dude. I don't care. I'm jumping off this balcony if it's June at this point. But, like, I'm re realizing, like, how hard it is to make things informative and entertaining. Do you know what I'm saying? It's Because we're different. James, you know that more than anybody. You know what I'm saying? I, it's tough. And you're not supposed to have this figured out yet. I mean, everything yeah. is so new and so unprecedented. Uh, you're figuring out how to navigate just as all the rest of us are trying to figure out how to navigate through this world. I mean, I think yeah. that's totally fair. I mean, you're not you going to have this. You know, what's really challenging too is like doing, uh, doing nights is that all the news has pretty much happened. Yeah. So right. there's, there's not anything like new, you know, like uh, the mayor goes on today and talks about everything and it's like, boom, now you have some things to go update. Here's what's happening all of my stuff is kind of at this point kind of settled at this point, you know, it's, it's four or five hours old and it's like, okay, I got to touch on it cause it's stuff. But at the same yeah. time, I don't want to be, I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't think anybody wants me to come in at seven o'clock and yeah, it's nighttime. So let's just get wacky. Like right, it doesn't yeah. even feel right. Well, but you're then, the music intensive guy too at night. And that's tough yeah. cause music is kind of on a standstill. Well, it's not, it's, but I know what I'm trying to, it's kind of been my angle so far is just like, let's hang out and listen to tunes. Cause to be honest, yeah. like it's, it's, uh, this may come off as a little corny, but like, it's really as therapeutic for me as it is for a listener to like, just let's just tune out and listen to some music for a little while. Like sure. yeah. it's been really helpful to get me through it too, in a weird sort of way, which I wasn't expecting. Like I kind of thought I'd be, you know, the authority or whatever you want to call it. Like, okay, come along with me. I'll take care of you. And I'm kind of going like, man, I'm really in this with you. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Well, guys, I, you know, I adore you both. And uh, we may need to keep having, not recording, but we may need to keep having these conversations just to keep I would that, love to do this. To that FaceTime, that, that connection, which is, yep. I, I swear it's important. To me, so I'm, I'm, I'm in. I'll, I'll podcast with you whenever you want. Yeah. Just, just seeing it, your faces makes me happy. So uh, Tim Virgin, John Manley, thank you for doing this. Thank you, James. And uh, with, you. With, when this shit, when this muck passes us by, we'll do this in a car with food for real. Oh, just like I used to back in February. We'll, we'll do it like, oh, remember February? Oh, I want a breaded steak. Oh, oh. we'll go to Recabenny's. Yeah. Manly, have you been to Recabenny's yet? No. So it shall be. Breaded steak <laughs> sandwich. Done. Uh, Carco and Carne sponsored by CNH Financial Services. Thank you, guys. Thanks, man. Thanks, JVO.